Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Leading Brexiteer businessman Sir James Dyson has been accused of betrayal after announcing the relocation of his company's head office from the UK to Singapore. Let's start in Wales. So many good things do. Stan's in Swansea. Stan, what businesses did he mean it would be good for, if not his own? It's only the Remainer that could put forward your case today, James. It's a in question. This it's a question, not a case. In this respect, if he didn't mean his own business, what businesses do you think he meant? In this that you... I, I will keep created... asking you that question, but you, you carry on not answering it for a while, just out of fairness. Oh, well, you, you, uh, you and the rest of the Remainers, and I include the PM, have created a <coughs> regime of uncertainty. And the first thing that a business needs, whether it's small, large or global, is certainty. We don't even know, because of Dominic Grieve and co., if we're going to be leaving on the 29th of March... Yes, and, the, and, the, and this is the fault of people who said we shouldn't leave. So how, uh, how, how... Just run me through that logic, will you, first, Stan? Oh, certainly. OK. You. So, so you and the rest of the Ramonas who want a people's vote are fascist and the fascist-like tendencies that you've got... Let's, calm, you let, let's, let, let, let's, let's calm down, because I'm sure you've got some really good points to make, not just some hollow insults. And, and let's focus on two questions, then. If you don't want to answer the one about which businesses James Dyson was talking about, you've used that phrase, will of the people. When the two chairmen of Vote Leave, Boris Johnson and Michael Goh, voted against each other last week, which one was representing oh. the will of the people? The will of the people took place in... in, in no, but uh, which one? Which of the two leaders of Vote Leave? In was... 2016, James. You, that's two questions you can't answer, Stan. Why have you rung in? Why? Because day after day, <laughs> you're day after proud day. a newspaper... Um, and that yes, but now, now you're just being silly again. I know well, then Pravda is the Russian word for truth. So let's look at the two questions you can't answer and then reflect on why you can't answer them. The first one is, when James Dyson said that Brexit would be good for British businesses, he clearly didn't mean his own business, so which businesses do you think he meant? No, and the I second, and the second one stable, is... In a stable environment. And the second one is, when the two chairmen of Vote Leave voted against each other, which one represented Leave voters? Uh, I'm not aware of, that they did. Uh, right, okay, well, Michael Gove, Michael Gove voted in favour of Theresa May's deal with the e European Union and Boris Johnson voted against it. So which one of those two chairmen of Vote Leave represented Leave voters? It depends where you draw the line. Some well, draw it wherever have, you want. Just give me an answer to at least one question I'm asking some today. Some people now believe that the only way we're going but, to uh, get out is to accept... But I'm only talking Theresa to you. So, so who, who represented Leave voters? The man who voted for Theresa May's deal or the man who voted against it? Both of them, of course, being leaders of the Leave campaign. Well, I'm firmly, firmly in the Johnson camp. Right, so the uncertainty caused by turning down the only deal that has been offered to the British people is the fault of the people who supported it, not the people who rejected it. That's quite an odd place you've ended up in, Stan. No, I haven't ended up in any odd place because you've got a Remainer at the top of government. Yeah, but you, you know that eventually repeating these sort of fatuous, meaningless phrases... What, well, like the people's vote? Is that a fatuous um, uh, conundrum, if ever I heard well, one? Well, you we, know what it means. Had, you, well, you know, I, I you know, know what it means, means Stan. We're going to ignore but why, again, we've now moved. People, but we've just established that. that oh, day. Stanley, we've just established that there's not any argument that 17.4 million people are being represented because the two leaders of the campaign voted different ways on the only deal that's been put to them. So. That's why I kept asking you. I thought you understood why it was such a brilliant question, but obviously it took a while for the penny to drop. You do now. Of those 17.4 million people, did the Vote Leave chairman who supported Theresa May's deal speak for them, or did the Vote Leave chairman who rejected Theresa May's deal speak for them? 
the silence is 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 great because of course we don't, you don't know. No, you fill the silence just with an answer. The privacy of the ballot box. You fill the silence with an. It wasn't the privacy of the ballot box. They walked through the lobbies in the House of Commons, mate. It was on television. No, no, I'm talking about when we voted to leave. Yeah, so so you can't then talk the about. If you can't move. Oh, Stan, European you can't move Union. from talking about the will of the people to then saying, well, we don't know what the will of the people is because of the privacy of the ballot box. We we know what it what it was. It was. The, the well, no, what it was, leave. it was a lot of in, in, um, unkeepable promises that contradicted each other and cancelled each other out, which is why the whole campaign has ended up with the two leaders of it voting against each other on a very simple bill put before Parliament. So that's not gone brilliantly. Let's go back to the question that we started with. If James Dyson wasn't talking about his own business when he said that Brexit would be brilliant for British business, what businesses do you think he was talking about? The 95% of businesses in Britain that aren't affected by Europe. 95% of businesses that aren't affected by Europe are the ones that are going to be better off when we leave the European Union. They're going to be no worse off, and in fact... Well, that's not really a campaigning... That's not for, really a campaigning... That's not really a campaigning slogan. A made-up number of businesses that will be no different from how they were before. No. Uh, you, Stan, it's not me. You, you Stan, like Stan, people, Stan. I don't, mate, you just complained about the silence. That's the opposite of talking over people. I, I can't do this anymore. It's, it, it's beginning to feel sadistic. But just take this thought away with you. It's not me you're cross with, Stan. It's James Dyson, and then it's yourself. It's 10.27. So, uh, John has called from Sutton and Sam uh, from Sydney in Australia. Let's start with Sam. <laughs> Let's get the Aussie view on all of this. Hello, Sam. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's prompting you to call all the way from Australia? Oh, just, uh, I'm, I'm British, lived there most of my life, um, other than about five or six years out in Sydney. Um, I've lived in, uh, in England for the last year, um, so I've watched, you know, a, a lot of this unfold. And one of the things that really sort of, um, sort of gets me is I remember when David Cameron said he would go to Europe and try and negotiate negotiate a better deal for Britain. Can you recall that? Yes. You can. So he said if he couldn't negotiate a better deal for Britain, what he would do is he'd come back and give it to the people and say, what we'll do is we'll have an in or out referendum. It'll be that simple. And we voted out. But now Theresa May is trying to say, let's try and do a deal. But he's already tried to do that. So why are we trying to go back now and say we need a deal? Because it's an exit deal. It's not a membership deal anymore. He was trying to get a continuing membership new deal, new arrangement, wasn't he, with some changes? So he was trying to negotiate the existing relationship. Mm. And he said, if I can't renegotiate a deal, we'll have an in or out referendum, meaning to most people's understanding, we'll be in or out of the European Union. So when people against all the doomsday prophecies that people were faced with, you know, when they faced the vote. They're saying, you know, they're saying to the people, it's in or out. Everyone voted out. Yes, but do you accept that there are different ways to do out? Yes, there is. But that's not the way people understood it. How do you know? Well, because when you went there and you said, what I'll try to do in basic terms is... I'll renegotiate the deal. If I can't do it, we'll have a simple... Yes. What he said... Yes, but I could say... I could say... in or out referendum. Yeah, but I could say... I could say I am definitely going to decorate my house. It doesn't tell you much about the colour of my walls, does it? That's a very twisted way to put it, though. Twisted? It's not. It's just about detail. Detail. It, you know, that life isn't black and white. Yes, it's detail, detail and it's nuance. He said it. He said, if I can't negotiate a better deal... I'll have a simple, and he said the word, I'll have a simple in or out referendum. Yeah, well, that meaning is, that we'll is a simple. Or out yeah. of the European okay. referendum. Yeah, I know you've said it. You said it a few times, Sam. I, I, could say I'm either, I could say I'm either going to paint my walls or not paint my walls. Yeah. Couldn't I? Yes, you could. And I could like, say, exactly well, the f I could say, said. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and I could say, right, the family decision is that you are going to paint the walls. Now, let's discuss which colour. That's where we are now, isn't it? We're discussing which colour the walls are going to be, as a nation. That's what we're doing. Yeah, but the people broke it out, so we're not going to paint the wall. The people voted out, so we're not going to paint the wall. Yeah, so you're saying to me that you're having a family conversation, are we going to paint the wall or not? So your family says yeah. we're not going to paint the wall, so but it, but isn't, with colour. Yeah, but isn't the reality that each option, whether you're in painting your walls or out not painting your walls, it has 
serious implications as to how you do that. Don't you? Don't you not see? Not really. No. It's no. Not going to okay. Paint the wall. You're not going to paint the wall. All right. Well, but in uh, in real in real terms, let's go away from my silly example. In real terms. Okay. Well, that's your example. You said silly. I, I well, no, because I was just trying to have a bit of God, Sam. I'm just trying to have a bit of fun with the process. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, lighten up. Let, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. What I'm trying to say, it was that simple. He said, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. If I can't, it's an in or out decision. People voted out. So like you, like a kind of great analogy you put it there for me. Are we going to paint the wall or not? We're not going to paint it. There's no discussion. <laughs> see, see, you don't it's think no it's deal. silly at all, do you? You like it when, it's, when it serves your purpose. Well, oh. I don't really like it. I just think that's what you put to me. All right, but listen... Isn't the reality of a, of a huge economy like ours that there are complexities, there are nuances to either decision, to staying in and to, and to leaving? There are, there, are, there are complexities, I agree, but at the same time, when you ask the people of the country what they want to do, and you tell them it's that simple, mm. and they say, no deal, and then you try and make a new deal, and they've already said, we don't care how, after all the... So people on both sides said different things. Yes, but people do care, inside and outside Parliament, people do care yes, but when, how but, we but, leave. But, but, but before people had the vote to say no, before people, well, for either way, before people had the vote, it was put in a certain way where it, it could have been a disaster. And David Cameron said it was a simple in or out. But that doesn't mean, it's, still... that doesn't mean it's true, is it? It doesn't mean it's true just because David Cameron said something. He said a lot of things. But it isn't yeah, simple, is it? One of the he said is no, but it isn't simple. It's not simple. Well, it, it is that simple. The last said, two, no, the last two and a half years have told us it isn't simple. If, if it was simple, we'd be out and we'd be flying me, high. Would you agree with me that David Cameron said, if I can't negotiate a better yeah, deal yeah, yeah. with oh, Europe... Oh, God, stop saying it, Sam. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and then what did people want for? Do you agree... That it isn't so simple. Now hold on, but what? Hold on. Let me bring it back a second. Then yeah, what yeah. did people vote for? Yeah, yeah, they voted to leave. Okay. Yeah. So, so where's the discussion there? In Parliament. That's, this is why I called in. In Parliament. This is what I'm trying to get a grasp on. I'm not, there's not, no no one's no one's lying here. We've all got different versions of the truth and what our views are. But what I'm trying to say is, what did people vote for after he said, "I try and get a deal," and then we have an in or out referendum? Yeah, but David Cameron. N any more than Theresa this May. Isn't about David Cameron's character. No, no, hang on. But it's neither, neither. The question you ask the people. But neither David Cameron, something. neither David Cameron, nor Theresa May, are, have absolute power. Parliament has a say. Well, they're representative of the people. Parliament is representative of the people. Yes, but he still, he's the one who started the referendum. Yeah, but he's not. He wasn't some kind of well, he's, emperor. David Cameron did put the proposition to the people. Yeah, I mean, we're he, going, we're going round in circles, Sam. We're going round in what? circles because I accept what you are saying to no, me. No, we will, because you're twisted different ways. I'm not twisting anything. I accept what you are saying to me. That is exactly what David Cameron okay. did, and we voted as a nation to leave. Now, beyond that, so that no, we part we, company. Well, okay, we part company because question. I see that there are complications are to, to this, and you don't. He's already tried to negotiate. So we will go around in circles. Because it's a, it's kind of a circular conversation. Well, uh, so it's not really. To, it's no, not a circular please, conversation. Let me, let me just finish because I don't want to waste the time on air. He's trying to negotiate a deal. He said, if I can't do it, we'll have in or out. Then we vote out and then we try to do a new deal. But he's already tried to do that. Is it my turn to speak now? I'm just a bit conscious that you keep saying, let me finish, let me finish. And in fact, it's me who never gets to finish a point. Well, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's hard. Okay. Right, shall I go? Different. Yeah, it's not a circular conversation. If you will depart for a moment from the fact that I agree with you, that that's what Cameron said. I agree with you that the nation voted to leave. Where we do part company, therefore it's no longer a circular conversation, is that I think there are complexities to the type of Brexit we have. You think out means out. Yes. Your turn. Yes, it, it, I do. I do think that. Yeah. No matter what. Because, because that because that was the that was there's only two choices on the ballot paper. But Sam, you are you are one. There, was, there wasn't. There wasn't. See, there wasn't doing it again. In, out, and out with a deal. See? Because he'd already tried to do the deal. Is it my turn now? No, I only said a few things. <laughs> in the middle of me saying a few things. 
You asked me Which to I didn't go, get I to went. finish. It's just a pet hate okay. of mine. Sorry, we just... sorry, you just no, it's both of go. us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Let's go. No. Okay. Me now. If Parliament yes. didn't exist, if Britain was just run by Sam, then fine. Out, 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 out we go. And if it was run by entirely the 17.4 million who voted to leave great we're on to a winner out doesn't matter no discussion let's make this really quick maybe painful but let's make it quick but that isn't how britain is, is run we have a parliamentary democracy we have debate we have votes we have amendments we have levers of power to pull in parliament and that's what's happening no betrayal just parliament just a democracy Mark. your turn i'm not sure really where you're going with that I'm saying, that I'm saying, I'm saying, I am, I'm saying to you, Sam, I am, I'm saying to you, Parliament exists, which is why, which is why out isn't the only option. That. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't really have a very, I didn't really have a massively complex question when I came on air, but you still haven't answered my very straightforward question. Go on, remind me of your straightforward question. I thought your straightforward question okay. was, wasn't, it wasn't David Cameron just giving us a simple in and out and I said yes he was but that isn't the only reality yeah, okay. that was your question was it well, yeah that was my question I've answered yeah. it about but five isn't times the only, isn't the only reality but, but I've answered it five question, times or the more the reason we're can, do you want to carry on or shall, shall I go you go okay so the reason we kept keep going back in circles is because Theresa May is trying to do a deal would you agree and she's been trying for what two years mm-hmm Okay, and David Cameron said, I'm going to try and do a deal. And if I can't do a deal, we'll have an in or out referendum. Mm -hmm. So why are we still trying to do a deal? Because he was, he was looking for changes to the nature of our membership. All kinds of water, including the referendum, has gone under the bridge since then, the vote to leave. And Theresa May is now trying to negotiate a deal no, 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 as to the no, manner no, no, in no, which no, we no, leave. No, That's just sorry, a fact, Sam. That, that, that was not water under the bridge. A referendum on the key thing he promised after not managing to do a deal is... Bridge no, you're misunderstanding what... Just, Sam, if okay, I may, well, if I may... Clarify, like you're painting if, the wall scenario if I may... If I, if, I may, if I may, if I may explain yes, what I mean by water under the bridge, I didn't mean, you obviously took that to mean something dismissive. I don't mean that at I, all. I well, I don't mean it to be dismissive at all, quite the opposite. I mean, it, is, it has materially changed the terrain on which we stand as a nation. And Theresa May is stand... Do you, do you mind, do you mind yeah. explaining Yeah, well, isn't now? it obvious? Because we're now... Leave it. We're now attempting to leave the European Union. The point yes, of the, 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 the difference. We're now, we're, now, we're now leaving because people haven't in or out. People haven't in or out to leave. So we voted out. So now attempting to leave. So, so that changes something. Why does that change something? No, the referendum. Well, oh my God. Oh, the referendum. <laughs> the referendum was out, so we should leave. But what, why does that change something? Uh, why does that mean we should start having a big conversation? Because David Cameron's had the conversation, the position of power he was in with the people in power, which was Van Rompuy at the time. He's had those conversations. He didn't manage to get a result. So we had, as he said, an in or out referendum. So, so because we voted out for some reason, it's different. Because we voted out, why should this conversation exist? Why should we be thinking, okay, well, that changes things. It doesn't change anything. It does. The fact remains, we, we voted out after he gave us a choice. I know. It was a simple choice. Haven't we voted in? This, this conversation wouldn't exist. The whole hmm. Brexit word wouldn't exist. But Sam, you've said a number of times that I haven't answered your simple question. I have answered your simple question a number of times. And let me finish this point. Yes, you are right that David Cameron said what he said. Yes, you are right that we voted to leave. What I meant when I said water under the bridge, I meant the result of the 2016 referendum is I, I, far from dismissing it, it is material to everything that has happened in the subsequent two years. But Theresa May's position is unrelated to David Cameron's position for that very reason. She but, is, but she is, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, related. let me finish. She is in a, a unique position of trying to negotiate our departure from the European Union. Not because she's, well, arguably not because she's trying to keep us in, but because leaving it the way you describe and the way the no dealers describe, it is disastrous for this country. 
But her position, her position in government is identical to David Cameron's. So why should she be trying to achieve anything other than what he said we get from his referendum? Well, she already has, hasn't she? Because we're leaving. So she's, her starting point is entirely... Yeah, well, as things stand, yes, we are. Well, it's it entirely does, it different. Like well, we'll see, won't we, in the long term. I think it's still entirely possible and likely that we'll leave. <laughs> It should, it, it, the question shouldn't be whether it's possible or not, not when we're given a simple in or out. Yes, but, but we've been we've been over this, Sam. That I know we've been over that this. Out but that's what, is that, more we're complicated still going over it because you can't give us sim- the reason we're still going over it is because you can't give a straightforward answer to it. You keep saying things like is that because oh, the reason Theresa, it, May, Theresa it, May is different to David Cameron, but no, that, she's not. I didn't say that. No, she's not. She's, I didn't say yes, that. Did. No, you I said didn't. It approximately about what two nope. minutes ago. No, I did not you, say. You, I didn't. Please let me finish and and stand by my words, Sam. Theresa May, I did not say Theresa May is different to, to David Cameron, although that's pretty self evident. I said she is no, standing. I, no, I didn't. Please let me explain myself if if you need further explanation. I said she's standing on different terrain than David Cameron because of that what, 2016 what vote. Mean? What do you mean by that? Standing on different terrain. Well, entirely can you, different. Can you and, on that? Yeah, and, that. yeah, okay, an entirely different set of circumstances. What because, the, what, because, what because, okay, so 2016, resolve, the referendum. What? No, no, I, Sam, I, you're, you're asking me things here. You're behaving like a toddler. I'm how am I? I'm saying, I'm asking you about the terrain. Okay, so you're saying that she sounds on different terrain than yeah, David Cameron. she absolutely is. I'm asking you how. I'm asking you how. Because we voted to leave. Then. How is she on different terrain? Because we voted to leave. Okay, so why does she not fulfill it? Because there are ways of leaving. And that's what the national conversation is about. Of, there are ways of there are ways of leaving in ways that suit you. So I assume you, that you would probably prefer to remain. I'm I, I'm I've come round to, to Brexit. If Brexit happens, so be it. I think Bre- I think Parliament. So be it. So I want all. I want Parliament to decide this. I would prefer Parliament to be able to rather decide than, this rather than the people who have already spoken. But but they've spoken, and Parliament has the right to interpret what way we leave the European Union. Do you reject Parliament outright on this, Sam? No, no, but let's bring it back to the, the, the terrain matter. You haven't answered my question on that yet. Theresa May sounds on a different terrain to David Cameron well, I think after he resigned. Yeah, well, so David Cameron resigned. What don't, resigned, what don't you May understand? What don't you understand about that? The, the different terrain well, is, is the vote. That's what I'm asking to elaborate. Life that's after the vote. Life after the vote is different than life before the vote, no? Otherwise, well, why, and, otherwise and, the and vote... Why, and, and why is that? Because the people said they want to leave. Yeah. And David Cameron said if we vote out, then we leave. Yeah. So why is, why is life any different after that? Because what, my, the point of my I call... I think you know, you back. know, don't you? I, I, know there's lots of, I know there's lots of ways that people can swing it or put it. But the, the, the reason for my call is I wanted to bring it back to really simple things that people, regardless of their walk of life in Britain, understand. Okay, um, for, for technical reasons only, for having to get some ads in, Sam, I'm going to have to leave it there with you. And we had a long conversation, a frustrating conversation, but uh, thank you for your call. Always welcome, Sam, in Sydney. Steve's in Gloucester. Steve, what have you got? Hi, good morning, James. Hello, um, I've, I'll have my cards on the table. I'm a Brexiteer. Still? Um, I do believe we're going to be better off out of, out of Europe. Um, well, let's, let's have a little look at that, shall we? What, what, okay. do, what do you think the head of Airbus is missing that you can see? No, I, I don't think they are missing, but... It, right, what know, about the, head of, so- the prob- head of Sony? There are going to be problems with the no-deal Brexit. Panasonic? It's like any divorce. It's like any divorce. No, no, it's not like any doing. divorce. It's completely unique and unprecedented in the history of the international trade. are very similar. They are there's not no, very similar. There are not. There is, there is no divorce that isn't messy, that doesn't get, you know, heated, but in the end... It does work itself out. In the end, both sides now, are worse off than they were before, financially. But when Always. They, why you want to carry on with this, to my mind, spurious analogy, then, yeah, you, 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 you've got both sides worse off yeah. than they were before. So we'll agree on that. Now tell me why these businesses are so spooked by a crashing out Brexit that they're leaving they Britain. They have invested billions of pounds into Britain. They so, are not going to pull the plug just because we go out of a no deal. So they why is he lying back, then? Like, like, like any wise business person... Sony and Panasonic have already back. moved. You will sit, they will probably have moved for commercial reasons, the same as Dyson. They will only be moving for commercial reasons. So why, why is it commercially I, I, preferable to be in Singapore or Amsterdam than it is in post-Brexit Britain, Steve? 
they can be tax reasons, they can be labour reasons. I, I, why is the iPhone built in China? And yet it's, it's designed and built by Apple in America. Yes, but because is it's it cheaper an American to build it product? in China. So exactly. that, that, no, but that's not exactly. I'm asking why well, a it British... Is a commercial reason, a, isn't a, it? A, 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 yes, so why is Britain so unattractive commercially? And why do you want it uh, to be? I mean, our tax has changed. It has got better, but before it was quite high. Um, but you, it, no, you, need, you need to answer that question. Why do you want Britain to be commercially less attractive than it currently is, Steve? You can't say it's scaremongering. Sony and Panasonic have moved. 250 firms are talking to the Dutch government. The head of Airbus has said, we'll pull out of the country completely. Now, I, I don't take offence, but if you're just going to say fake news, I don't believe them, you're on the wrong programme. I need to know some thinking. I need to know some, some, well, no, some, some meat, no, some intellectual that, meat. Well, Nobody no. can prove that. The, 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 I can't see Airbus that have in, invested billions into this country yeah. just going in on a Monday morning after we've left Europe and going, right, we're moving. OK, so, so why do you think they're saying this, then? Because they don't want a Brexit. Why not, want to scare Steve? People why don't they, not they want one? Why, why don't they want one, Steve? Because it is probably commercially better for them. It is better with a free trader. But we so why are you in like favour of making stuff. it worse for British businesses, then? Just talk me through that bit of the, your position. Well, if we make it worse, because... Because what? I missed that. Well, why, why do you sorry, want Britain to be worse for business than it is now? Right. If we stood up to Nazi Germany, right? Mm, we, mate, we, one of the most no, no, you, I'm, I'm really sorry, but that's complete pants in the context of the conversation right, we're in having. You don't, no, 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 Parliament. Steve, you don't answer a question about why a bloke in Gloucester is in favour yeah. of making Britain bad for business by talking about the Second World War. All you can do as a bloke in Gloucester is tell me why, having voted for Brexit after being told it was going to be very good for British business, you've now found yourself on national radio saying, I'm in favour of something that I know is going to be bad for British business. So just talk me yes. through that thought process. Why are you in favour of making Britain a less attractive place to do business? Because in the bigger picture, yes. we will be able to decide our own destiny. We will be a country okay, that so, decide so we its decide own and its own future. Yeah, so we decide our own destiny in the context of Airbus, or let's pick on a company that's already moving, Panasonic and Sony, they're moving their headquarters to Amsterdam. Talk me through okay. how, how, how we decide our own destiny in, right. the, in the context of those two companies, Steve. Here's a good example. Yeah. Brexit hasn't happened yet, and there is, a, there is a, a small chance that it may even not, because people are hijacking it. Right. right. Why would a company... No, Steve, move... here's the thing, No, hold on, let, let me finish. Let well, me finish. of course I will, Steve. Why would a company move to Amsterdam when Brexit hasn't even happened yet, it might not happen. Yes, well... Don't you wait and the, see the answer what to that is before really, you move. The answer to that is really simple. And they've provided the answer. And if you don't know what the answer to that question is, it, it is... Again, I, I, I hope I don't offend you, but it's incredible to me no. that you'd sit in Gloucester and think, I'm going to phone this bloke on the radio and I'm going to tell him that this is all great and it's nothing to worry about, but I'm not going to check on what the actual chief execs of Airbus and... Um, so what, what, Panasonic so and Sony, even yes, uh, and they've explained why, but you don't know so what their the explanation is, and so, here you are saying okay, that they're okay. wrong. Oh, I agree. Steve, with you just stop a second, but, mate. This is this is national radio, and you're here saying yeah. I don't know what they've said, but I know that they're wrong. Right. I know that any business moves for commercial reasons and to benefit and then the shareholders. Ba then we're back to the question. Dyson doesn't actually have any shareholders, but then we're back to the question. No, he doesn't. You're right. Then we're back to the question of why you're in favour of making Britain a bad or a worse place for business and your answer, which I... I don't I'm, believe it will be. In the long run, but, I do but not you rang in to say that it would be. So then you we're back. Then we're back. Then, Steve, if it's all scare tactics, we're back to the question of why have they already moved? Right. What happened when no, we were No, no, that's Brexit a question. That's not an answer. Budget? That's what not... No, Steve, you do, it's like Nazi budget? Germany. Why, if it's scaremongering, why have they already moved? Why would you move before it's happened? That's what I'm asking you. Why have they already moved? So, well, so, OK, then I, I'm not sure. I, right. I, I agree okay. with you. Well, I don't that, know that's the point at which you should think, maybe today I'm not going to stand up in public and claim that I know better than the head of Airbus why he's doing what he's doing, despite the fact that I haven't read or heard why he's doing what he's doing. I'm not going to stand up in public today and say it's all scaremongering, because when someone says to me, if it's scaremongering, why have they already moved? 
I'm going to feel a bit silly. I'm not going to stand up in public today and claim that it is going to be great for British business, but in the short term it's going to be bad, but that destiny somehow cancels out the negatives. And I'm not going to stand up in public today and try to answer a question about why all these business people would be saying the things that they're saying by claiming that they're all lying or scaremongering. Or t it's not your fault, this, Steve. The people that have turned you into a man that can ring a national radio station and talk almost undiluted nonsense and end up citing Nazi Germany and destiny while conceding that the thing you voted for because people told you it would be brilliant for British business is going to be really bad for... Look what they've reduced you to, man. Look what they've reduced you to. Don't get cross with yourself. Don't get cross with me. Start getting cross with them because it's probably too late. Um, this is the question, isn't it? The, the, the simple question of what is it that all of these business people are missing that Esther McVeigh can see? Oh, three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number that you need. Paul's in Bristol. Why are they all fibbing, Paul? Oh, blimey, you woke me up. Sorry, <laughs> on the phone. I was chatting to myself. Huh? Um, why are they all this fibbing? Is, well, gonna actually, good. I was going to bring something else into the thing. You, you, you sort of kicked the um, Article Twenty Four into touch um, yeah. this morning when you introduced yourself, and um, I find it quite amazing that something that is it, it is part, as an actual fact and part of the uh, European Union agreements, what have you. And yet your own guy, Nick, didn't even know about it's it. No, it's not um, part of the European Union agreements. It's part of okay, the, it's okay, part okay. Of the tr international trade treaty that preceded the WTO. And, and there's no criticism of Nick for not knowing about it, because it's complete no, nonsense no, and no, utter, I'm not, no. utterly I irrelevant. Nick. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't criticise him, but um, obviously it's a, it's a feature or a potential... Um, um, but you phone me up and you don't know what it is. So wh where does this conversation matter, it go now? It, it, it doesn't actually matter whether I know the, the full detail because obviously people like um, uh, Moggy, he sort of presented it and he says it's not being used. And I find it, a guy this morning, I listened to him. Yes, but uh, it's nonsense. He, he quite, yeah, carry on. It's nonsense. Yeah, no, but you, you it, it'd be nice if somebody explained it. People don't even know about it. Well, let me it. explain you, it to you. What do you want to know? I'll do my best. I mean, this is not my field of expertise by any well, stretch actually, of the imagination. Not everybody's not, well, not just everybody's ask me a question. I'll, I'll do my best. What I'm saying is not everybody's listening to LBC Radio. So that, well, no, but you have. So, so what are you confused about? <laughs> I want to know why the general public doesn't know about it. Because it's not true. So Article 24 doesn't exist. No, Article 24 exists, but it's not, as yeah. you thought, part of European Union rules. It's part of GATT, which preceded the WTO, and it allows for two people who have a trading agreement, if they both mutually agree to renegotiate that trading agreement and leave the current terms and conditions in place for the period of that negotiation, which should not be allowed to exceed 10 years. Right, OK. To me, that sounds like quite a good thing to, to put to it into place, though. But you said you, you did say that you'd just woken up. No, uh, no, repeat what I said. Do, so who's going to agree to that? To take? Paul, no, mate, this is just... This, the, the, no, 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 you, the whole country seems to not know about this. But, from few but it's not to, relevant. No, Ivan Rogers gave a speech about it last if week. Not, if, it, if it's not relevant, why would... I mean, Morg is, he, he, he's just like you, an intelligent guy, well-educated. He certainly knows more than the majority of people in this country. If he's he desperate it, to get no deal over the line. You'll have to ask him why, but nobody involved <laughs> in the world... Can't do that, though, can no, I? Can't you can. Do I think you can ring him on Friday. Nobody involved, oh, do that? Nobody involved in the WTO recognises the description that the ERG is putting forward of what the WTO actually is. Pascal Lamy, a former head of the WTO, said for us to do this would be like moving from the first division to the fourth division. The EU is not insisting on anything. The WTO non-discrimination provision means that you must apply your tariffs equally outside of a trade deal. This Article 24 thing, mate, is just the new Brexit means Brexit. It's something that people that don't understand anything can say to people who do understand stuff in the hope of somehow sounding balanced, as you've just well, proved. I, I, I personally think that 90% of the country don't understand Brexit, so... Um, so, well, uh, I, I would say I, that 48% now do, or 50%. Again, if you don't understand, what do you want to know? Ask me anything. I, I, I watch um, Question Time this week, Hard Talk. This is you guys. Both what what you don't answer. you understand? Ask me. 
Well, it's the detail of Brexit. Go, ask me. Ask me a specific mainly, question. I'll tell you why. No, I'll tell you why. No, I'm Brexit late for the news. I, I, I just ask me a question. You said you don't understand stuff. What don't you understand? Well, Brexit, Brexit, Brexit hasn't happened yet. It doesn't actually exist. So how can one give you a, give a judgment on it? Okay. If you want to... So, yeah. and, and, and imagine something has been written down describing what will happen on a certain date. No, that's, it's, all project, it's all forecast, though. Okay. Forecast. Uh, look, mate, I think, I think you should probably go back to sleep. It's 11.01.